Hey guys, thank you for joining me here again for another Open Word Bible study, the study that takes us inside and behind the original languages the Bible was written in, in order that we can pull from the context of those word studies, bringing them back into our English Bibles, where we will have a better and deeper understanding of the words that we read there. Today, the word that we get to look at together is converted. And this is a word that came by request, and so thank you for that request. Along with the word itself, there's also a passage of Scripture specifically with the request, and that is Matthew 18, 3, where this word converted is used. Uh, along our study, we will span out and look at other passages of Scripture that also use this same word. But we're going to start with Matthew 18, 3. And as a matter of fact, I want to include verses 1 and 2 for the sake of context. So here's what we're being told. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus' disciples were concerned with the wrong question about the kingdom of heaven. And so Jesus, as he often did, used this as an opportunity to teach them an important truth. How does a person even enter this kingdom of heaven? And Jesus' answer used a little child as an illustration to make the point that it is those who realize their dependence on him. Those who, rather than trusting themselves, trust God. Much like a little child, trusting their parents, understanding the dependence that they have on that parent. Those are the type. It is with that heart that a person will enter the kingdom of heaven because it is by realizing our true need for Jesus and trusting him that anyone is saved. And this is why Jesus says the words that he does there in verse 3, using this word converted, he says, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. So I think that we can get even a better understanding of why Jesus is using this word converted, converted and become as little children, if we open up converted in the Greek. And so the Greek word for converted is strepho. And strepho, it means to turn or to change direction. Now, as we've already witnessed in our reading, it can also be translated as converted. But I think that it helps us to get a little deeper into this word strepho and to understand that it really literally means to churn, to, to have some kind of churn that takes place. And so it is the case in which Jesus is using that as he speaks about being uh, uh, converted there in Matthew 18, 3, that it is churning, it's changing direction from self and self-dependence to churning from our own efforts to Jesus, trusting his work of salvation. Now, this action of churning or converting is well pictured in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9. And just a little bit of context before we get into reading the verse— while Paul was writing this letter to the church there in, in Thessalonica, he was sharing with them that he's, he had been receiving reports from other believers saying, we've been hearing about the faith of those who are in Thessalonica. We've been hearing about how they've churned and, and uh, from worthless things, they've churned to God. And, and everyone, everywhere was hearing this great news because the Thessalonians were so passionate about sharing it. So in verse 9, Paul says, For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. 
Did you notice when I read the word churn? This little guy right here, he churned from the temple of idols over to the cross, being a symbolic, of course, of the true living God. The Greek word that is used for churned is uh, actually it's, it's connected with strepho. Uh, let's look at it here. It's just a longer word, as you can see on the screen. It's epistrepho. And the epi part, the part I've just highlighted, that is a prefix that means to or against. Epi means to or against. So when it's combined with strepho, epistrepho, it means to be churned to something or churned against something. And the verse that we've been looking at, 1 Thess chapter 1, verse 9, is a vivid picture of churning. And it is this example of churning from one thing to another. And there's that little guy going again. See, if, so if you missed him the first time, you saw him churn right there. I want that picture to be in our minds, churning from one thing to another. And really specifically, the, the picture of churning to God. So again, just as Jesus was sharing in Matthew 18, 3 with his disciples, this idea of unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. This is that picture of churning. Jesus is saying to his disciples, you need to have a change of direction, even in your heart, in your mind, a, a change of direction from self-effort to trusting me. And it's really strepho, epistrepho, uh, this, uh, this concept of churning and changing direction. It's all related to repenting. To repent is to churn. It is to turn from sin. And, and then this idea of being converted is, is more that second half of turning to God. That's what this picture is all combined together. Now, the word converted is not only found in the New Testament, it's also found in the Old Testament. And I want us to take a moment to see King David's words, including this idea of converted in Psalm 51 verse 13. He says, then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. So we can see that the word used uh, for converted here, there it is. I had, to, I had to find it myself there. That that word in the Hebrew is actually the equivalent to the Greek word we've been looking at with strepho and epistrepho. So in the Hebrew, if we open this word up from right to left, we have Suv, shuv, sorry, sh shuv. And shuv, like strepo or uh, epistrepho, it means to churn. But there's, there's more to shuv, and, and as a matter of fact, it's included with strepho, but it can also be translated as return. I was waiting until we got to the Hebrew word to, to go into this, but this is the fuller context, the fuller picture of this word. Shuv can mean to churn or to return. And as a matter of fact, we can see that in other English translations of the same psalm we just read. So Psalm 51, verse 13, we read it originally, just a, a moment ago, in uh, the New King James Version. Now we'll read it in the English Standard Version and look what it says. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. And we'll look at one more translation, the New International Version, same verse. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. So we can see through both of those English translations that the words return or turn back were being translated from the Hebrew word shuv. It's shuv every time in, in, in the Hebrew, of course, but our English translations will translate them in different ways. In the English Standard Version and in the New International Version, we're able to see it translated with this return or turn back idea. And of course, this brings up the question, well, are we turning to God or are we returning to God? And in answer to that, I wanted to share with you a quote from R.B. Girdlestone. He writes, the process called conversion or churning to God is in reality a returning or a turning back again to him from whom sin has separated us, but whose we are by virtue of creation, preservation, and redemption. 
So we can see this wonderful truth that through conversion, we are being turned back. We are returning to God. What sin has separated, God has made an opening. He has made an opportunity for us to come back to him. And that opening, that opportunity is through Jesus, who is the gate. We are able to turn to God through Jesus. Just like Jesus was telling his disciples in Matthew 18, 3, you've got to be like little children, converted, changed to being like little children in the thought that you are trusting me to enter the kingdom of heaven. There is no other way. And that's a message for all of us. Well, listen, as you turn through the pages of your Bible and your own Bible reading, you're going to come across occasionally the word converted. Often you'll come across the word return or churn. Many times it will be in the context of turning from one thing, turning from worthless things to the one true living God. And there will be example after example of that throughout Scripture, Old Testament and New Testament. And so I hope that you will have that continuing picture in your mind when you come across that word converted, churned, returned, that, that you will see it's not just turning to something, but it's turning from something to something even greater. And I'd like to pray with you uh, after studying this word converted and knowing that we're going to come across in Scripture, hoping it's impacted your heart already today. Lord, we do ask that as we come to you, the living God, that we're able to see the things, the, the mindsets, and, and the ways that we have built our lives, Lord, that if it's not, if it is not in, in accordance with the way that you have lined out for us, to come to you through Jesus, Lord, that we would be converted, that we would change our ways, Lord. And we are dependent even on you for that, to be able to be converted. It's not something we can make happen in ourselves. We, we are dependent on you, Lord. We, we trust you for that. And I pray that that message would continue to be working in our hearts and minds, even for all of us, Lord, who have been converted who have changed our ways. Our, our new direction is through you, Jesus, trusting you, depending on you. I pray that we would have a heart to be in prayer for others who have not experienced that churn, have not experienced that returning to the creator, the savior of the world. And I pray, Lord, that you would be glorified, not just in the study, but in our reading and in our lives. And we ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, I realize I've got one more screen here. One more time we get to look at that word converted. But next week, that's going to be a whole new month, June 3rd. We're going to come back. We're going to have a new word to open up together. Until then, shalom in Christ.